Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to go ahead and do another video um, on the Lepi LP838. I've been using this for some time now with my bookshelf speakers as a 2.1 setup and it's been running pretty well. And recently I've been thinking that, you know, th this housing is great and everything is nice and uh, sturdy, but I kind of want to take the board out of this and I want to be able to attach it into my subwoofer you know the, the the whole the whole board just just gonna sit over here and i can just plug whatever i want yeah let's uh let's take a look take a couple of these screws out be careful not to drop them well that's all good and everything but now you gotta worry about this little ones this little tiny ones i'm just gonna use a really skinny flatheads to try and see if i can you know take these out Now I've resorted to a set of pliers. I'm just gonna pry this out. <sighs> Soft, it's, it's aluminum. So, just comes right off. These are easy, you just pull them out, those little knobs. They kind of just come right off. So what I'm doing is this little screws, I'm actually gripping it with my plier and just turning it little by little. And once I have enough, once I have one it gives enough, then I can just use my flathead screwdriver to kind of take it out. A pain in the ass, but uh, you know, gotta improvise when you don't have the right tool, huh? There we go. All right, that's it. Now let's take this thing out of its case and see what, what it looks like. Come on, just a little more to go. Something's catching it, I don't know what. Just gotta wiggle it out, okay. All right, that's the housing. All of it just came right off. This is the board itself. Let's take a look at this board for a second. I have no idea what I'm looking at, but anyways, this right here, this little this little goo. I mean, it looks like thermal paste. I guess the housing was acting like a heat sink, but whatever. Um, And there's that. And it says Lepi LP3883, model number made in Bukang. I don't know what Bukang is. But there's a little symbol made in China. Anyways, here's your little power uh, switch cable. Many other stuff in it. I Like I said, I don't know what, what any of this is. Resistors. <laughs> um, whatever. Let's see if I can take this out somehow. All right, so I figured out how to open this thing. Uh, this little knob, you know, if you try to pull it, it's actually really tight, which is good. Uh, but you can come behind here, back here, and kind of just take a flat head, skinny flat head, and try to pry it out like this. You know, just push it out, um, and slowly, once it gives, then you can pull it out. There you go. Same with the switch. The switch is kind of weird i mean it's it's you know it's it's one of those that snaps snaps in the housing itself um so you gotta kind of pry it out now the next challenge is how do i get this thing off probably just have to cut it that's it or or hold on hold on maybe i spoke too soon i wonder i wonder if i can do it like this no no that's not gonna work that's dumb well, I'm just gonna have to cut this thing off. All right, have my other trusty tools. Just gonna, just gonna cut this and damn aluminum. Kind of, kind of hard. 
That's good, right? It's it's hard. It's tougher to break open, but I think I can't cut. Mm, there you go. Cut, bend it open, and voila. There. My board is free. Still operational. It'll still work. Uh, you know, I still got some thermal paste left, some goo left. Now I am going to put that like so, right here. See how nice that looks? It'll be nice and hidden. All right, so here's what I figured. I have this, which needs to, which I'm gonna mount to my subwoofer. And these little chips, they need some sort of, you know, um, something to keep it cool. So I cut off a little piece from the housing that it came with, the aluminum housing, and I'm gonna, well, just literally just put that thing over there, like so, so it, you know, it, it helps with the, well, whatever it needs to help with. That'll be my heat sink. A cheap version, a janky old version of heat sink. Um, and to keep everything together, I am just going to use good old fashioned hot glue. This little white goo is kind of wearing off. They're really not that great. So I'm going to use my own. My little uh, Arctic Silver. Do I want to use that? Maybe not. Maybe I'll use my Formula 5 Antec. Maybe I'll use that. There's an older uh, one I had. Or I can use this, this uh, Cryorig CP7. I haven't even touched this thing. This thing hasn't even been opened. You know what? Maybe I'll use this. Yeah. I'll use the CP7. Well, while the glue is warming up, let's go ahead and put this, put the thermal paste in here. And, uh, you know, first I'm going to wipe that off. And nothing wipes off better with, uh, without some, you know, rubbing alcohol. All right. Got my trusty rubbing alcohol. And just get a little bit of bath tissue. And that should do it. Do it. Just first thing first, wipe this old stuff off just it comes off so easy my gosh all right that looks good this this is a crime this is not what it's meant for but improvise I don't know if that's a lot or if that's too little, but I'm just going to spread it around anyways. I don't care about a smooth surface. It just needs to touch the other plate and, you know, something to dissipate the heat. Hot glue is so warm, I can smell the thing from here. All right, that's, uh, that's good enough. All right, that's good enough. Thank you, Cryorig. I did not use your stuff on my CPU, but I sure used it on this thing. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and put this thing together. So first, you know, my little plate is here. I kind of have an idea that that's where it's going to go. So I'm just going to hot glue that thing in and make sure that sits in place. All right, let's, uh, let's try that. Let me move the camera a little more so you have a better view. All right, so that should be a good view for the rest of you. Put some here, there's some on the plate itself, and just stick that thing like so. Just, just gonna press it down and uh, let the glue do its thing. Do be careful, don't burn yourself if you try it like this. I don't. I'm doing it because, I don't know, I didn't feel like holding it with duct tape or anything. Just gonna glue, put a little more glue on the corner so it holds it in place. <laughs> you know what I need to make sure? That there's no glue in between or else it's not gonna work that well. I don't want the glue stuff touching the metal and the chip. Not good for business. So just gonna clean that up a little. Just the part where um, 
the chip will touch the plate. That's it. Okay. So here we go. Let me make sure I get this right. Okay. That's pretty much it. Yeah, now I have no idea how I'm gonna secure this thing. More hot glue. What else? Just hot glue the crap out of this thing. Hold it down and hot glue. Hold it down. And hot glue. Okay, well while that's cooling down, let me get another stick. Bam! Another hot glue stick. That should do it. Yep. Ah, uh, would you look at that? It, it is holding it in place, but I just gotta wait until it cools down properly. All right, good news. It did cool down and looks like it's kind of holding in place. You know, um, I'm sure if I pull it hard enough, it'll just come right off. But I'm not gonna do that uh, because it's not meant to, you know, be all. It's not a handlebar for me to lift the subwoofer by. It's just there for me to connect stuff to it. There you go. That's what that looks like. A cheap way to make an old subwoofer have an amp. All right, I was trying to hook it up to my AVR, but that seems to be a bit more challenging. So I'm gonna skip that. And uh, I'm just gonna hook it up to my computer. Uh, and plug that in. I'm just gonna plug it in there. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna hook it up to my computer, but rather this end, it's gonna go into my DAC. I have a DAC attached to this uh, for my computer that's giving sound to my uh, edifiers. Um, and this little bit is gonna go inside that DAC. But before I do that, let me just play some um, audio uh, you know to j just to show you what it sounds like without the subwoofer now mind you uh, the the sound i'm recording this with my camera microphone and it's gonna vary from speaker to speaker so if you're watching it on your phone or your own speakers it's always gonna sound different than what i hear what makes you different what makes you i just watched some spider verse trailer i love this movie one of my favorite Spider-Man movie of all time now. I saved the city, fell in love, then I saved the city again and again and again. Look, I'm a comic book, a serial, I get a Christmas album. All right, well, so, so you get the idea. Let's fast forward a little more. Daddy, that's impossible. Learn to be Spider-Man. This could literally not get any weirder. My family lives in Brooklyn. Whoa, 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 whoa. Miles, what's wrong? No. Oh. That's alright. Now let me go ahead and hook this up. Alright. So that's hooked up. The DAC is pretty cool. It's taking my um, optical audio out from my PC and it's, uh, it has two outputs. One is the RCA output which goes to my edifiers and the other one is a 3.5 millimeter um, output which is I can use it for whatever I want. So in this case we're gonna use it on this little amp. Okay. I'm going to turn it up, volume down, just give it a little bass, and let's start from the beginning. Yeah, that actually sounds really good. It's not bad. It's working. I'm happy. All right, well, 
that that's kind of it. If you want to give this sort of thing a shot, feel free. And you know, if you have a subwoofer laying around, buy one of these, stick it in there. You know, forget screwing it in or bolting it in. Just use some hot glue if you have any. And you're all set. All right. Thanks for watching.